right, so tell us what you're doing. Where, where are you operating? You know, we have uh, nine Red Cross Manus shelters throughout the area. We've got one at Adams City High School, one at the Mapleton YMCA in Boulder. Uh, we've got one in Erie at the Erie Community Center. Uh, we've got one in Arvada Senior High School, uh, First Presbyterian Church in Colorado Springs, because we are experiencing, experiencing some uh, flooding down there as well. Uh, Mountain View Bible Fellowship Church in Estes Park, Timberland Church in Fort Collins, Thompson School District RJ-12 Administrative Offices in Love, excuse me, in Loveland, and Mead High School in Longmont. So lots going on. Um, this is uh, this is currently estimated to be um, one of the highest level operations um, for the American Red Cross. We're actually bringing in some national visiting teams to help us with this operation to make sure we're we're, we're getting what people need in terms of sheltering. Food, water, um, you know, mental health assessments, those types of things. Someone pointed out that wasn't it just a little while ago that we were dealing with fires? We were fires were the big issue for Colorado and trying to help those folks. How does this compare in terms of the size of the effort that you have to put forth? Well, you know, we, we you know, there were there, there are so many people evacuated at this point, and so many people already sheltering, and we've had hundreds already stay in evacuation centers and uh, shelters overnight in the last two nights. So, you know, I mean, if you look at the long scale, people have the ability to, to plan and kind of get out with wildfires. This thing happens so fast that we're seeing a lot more sheltering opportunity right now for people, which is, which is unfortunate. And do you have plenty of room for people? Do you have plenty of, uh, of uh, supplies? You know, what we do is we identify, you know, a lot of what we do is just prepare for these types of things. So we always, we usually have about 400 shelter agreements across the state, sometimes more. And so we try to pre-position supplies as best we can. Certainly routes are a difficulty for us as they are for everybody. So getting things into places has, has been more of a challenge on this thing. Um, but we've been working with our government partners and um to provide us opportunities to be able to get those things where we need them. Again, Gina, as we're talking to you right now, we are looking at live pictures from Air Tracker 7 over the Loveland area, and we are seeing just how heavy this flooding is. Tell us about your biggest chap. I beg your pardon? This is Lyons that uh, we're pardon, looking at right Lyons now. area, pardon me. Uh, we, we have a uh, situation where we're wondering about how you, um, what kind of challenge, what the biggest challenge is, and uh, certainly people want to help. How can they do that? Yeah, right now the biggest challenge for us is is the the situation in Lyons and the folks that are evacuating there, um, and and so we're managing that situation as they continue to pull people out of that, and and we'll get people into shelters across uh, the the area that we have um, room for, and we're ready to take on. In terms of how people can help, I know people always want to you know open up their garages and those types of things. It's generally not what people need in these times. They really need um, organizations such as ours and others to do. Um, what we do, and so the best thing that we always recommend is people call 1-800 um, Red Cross and make a financial donation towards this operation, um, or they can um, go to redcross.org/colorado, and and those are two really easy to ways to, to to give. The other thing I, I might point out real quick is just last Friday we launched a, uh, the the Prepare Colorado movement, yes. which is a statewide movement with our federal, state, and local partners to say we as Colorado need to be the most prepared state in the nation. And I think this event right here shows us why. When it looks at Colorado and says we're low disaster prone, even with wildfires, and even at a moment's notice, people need to have their family game plan in place. And at redcross.org slash Colorado, they can start some movements there to be able to make sure that for the next event that we may have, they're even more prepared. Well, in particular, when we're watching these pictures out of Lyons and you can see entire roads washed out, you know, you can have evacuation plans, but you're right. You need a backup plan as well, because uh, we heard um, um, a former coworker of, of ours from Johnstown talking about how they were essentially stranded. A road that they took home last night is now closed. So... This is the, the situation that a lot of folks are dealing with today as they try and figure out um, not just plan A, but plan B, because it's an yep. important, uh, uh, important thing to keep in mind when you are dealing with um, life-threatening situations here and, and quick decision-making that you have to do here. Look at this video that's also in from, is this all for, also from Lions? Okay, my apologies, this is not Lions, so... Okay. Um, this is the Firestone area that uh, some video that was shot to earlier when air tracker went up. Uh, back to you again, Gino. I understand that uh, we, in talking to some of your folks earlier, uh, a couple of days ago, they said that some of this information about the preparedness and how to go about doing that is available online. Is that correct? Yeah, there's, you can certainly get a head start at Colorado, uh, excuse me, at redcross.org slash Colorado. 
Um, and uh, there's also a website that we've got with the state of Colorado called um, readycolorado.org. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it, it's just a place for people to start the process of having what we call really an emergency game plan because as um, and as you said, it's not just about your evacuation plan. It's really a game plan for what if I have to do multiples of things. And in some of the cases with the images that I'm watching on your television right now is um, – yeah, maybe sheltering in place for three or four days without water or mm-hmm. electricity or some of those things. So that's what we're really trying to do is say we're not as low disaster prone here in the state of Colorado as we all used to think we were. And, and this is a prime, prime example, and these images are a prime, prime example as to why we need to do a, a lot better job as a state to be more prepared, and we're on our way there. Yeah, it, they certainly are. I, we, we're looking at some of these pictures where you can see beautiful homes that are surrounded by flowing water and there is no way out and look at this house right now that is right there on the edge of probably what was a a creek and um it looks like it's uh, you know so much of that bank has washed away that uh, um you know that's that's a very very scary situation you know, yeah, these, are, these are devastating times they and are. um our, certainly our hearts and prayers are going out to everybody you, you again as i say i can't compliment you folks enough you do such a, a terrific job tell us a little bit about uh, what you've learned in this i know that each one of the all uh, emergency responders of any kind will tell you that whenever there's an event like this there are things that they learn about what works and what doesn't and uh, they can fine-tune their efforts for the next time around and there will be a next time around 